I definitely saw you on a website with yeah. another person. Uh, Lisa Lucia. It's my co-owner company okay. with uh, Lucia Blanchet. Mm -hmm. um, we do knitwear design um, for. Um, we're, we're trying scissors. I'm scared. I am. Oh, I'm no. scared. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> They're like very sharp. I was uh, I was working on a project as you were walking in, and so yeah, and so it just. Um, you know, I, I just made a fidget. fidget. I know. Fidget. Okay, yeah. so you co-own a company. Um, and uh, we do it. Knitwear design. Um, we're aiming to market towards TV and movies. Oh. Um, we just had a couple pieces featured on the new season of Gilmore Girls. Really? Yep. Yeah, totally. In fact, I have the pieces. I want to see do you want to see them? Of okay. course. Hold on. Are we skipping that already? Oh my gosh. So um, this is uh, <gasps> not the original. This is the original scarf that I had designed. It okay. was not the one that was featured on TV. Okay. But. Um, this is the eponymous. Is this, this isn't knitted. This is, is knit, <gasps> knit lengthwise. Yeah, it's Whoa. a two color ribbing. Look at this. Okay, wait, say the name again. It's a eponymous. Okay, you're gonna have okay, to spell so that for me. <laughs> E-P-O-N-Y-M-U-F. Okay, okay. Um, okay. with eponymous, <gasps> it is, um, an eponymy is a self-referential thing, so like an album named after the artist, so like Prince's Prince album. Or, right. Um, well, with Gilmore Girls, Rory was named um, because her mother's name is Rory. So right. Um, so it's her daughter was named after herself. Right. So, so that's why you called it that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that is so brainy. <laughs> this is so brainy for me. Okay, so wait, you have to rewind then. Okay. So you you designed this knowing it was going on Gilmore Girls? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so how did that happen? How did we get <clears throat> Okay, so um, I used to own a yarn shop, Sifu Design Studio in Chicago. I was open for five years. Um, in that time, I made friends with Brenda Maben, who is the costume designer for Gilmore Girls. And in Chicago? Yeah, she's originally from Chicago. Cool. And so uh, we have been like the best of friends and she found out that um, I was going to close the shop and it was um, financial reasons. Yeah. Um, but she said, hey, I hear you are doing something new after this and I want to give you this opportunity. And so she's just like, how about you design some pieces for the new Gilmore Girls? And I flipped out. Of course. Yeah, I flipped out. And so um, I said, of course, yes, please. And I put together a whole portfolio of like 20 different designs. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she picked about 10 of them, um, of which three were featured on the show. That's she so bought, cool. she ended up buying seven pieces from us. Mm -hmm. Um, so the pieces that I got on the show were the eponymous, the dots and dashes scarf. There was a hat that went with it, um, but she didn't wear it in the show. Um, and then the cough, the jumbo coffee sweater that um, Lane wore in the very first opening scene. The very first opening scene. Yeah, yeah. When she's in the grocery store, you can see her wearing the sweater. You have to understand about TV and film that so much gets cut. Yeah, you know, because you oh, have yeah. to start with a lot and then you pare it down to what you know makes the cut. Mm -hmm. But what's that phrase people say? Cutting room floor or whatever. Yeah, right, right. So you can't take it personally. <clears throat> no, actually, um, one of the pieces that got cut from the show was featured on Fuller House. So the pizza sweater that Kimmy Gibbler wears, yes. that's one of ours as well. What? Yeah. Okay, so does Bren, is her name Brenda? Brenda. Does Brenda also costume Fuller House? How did that connect? No, um, Netflix um, did the reboot of Gilmore Girls, mm -hmm. and they also did the reboot of Fuller House. Mm -hmm. And so uh, because they shared a wardrobe um, facility, which is like an airplane hangar of costumes, Can you imagine? it was the coolest thing. I walked in and I was just like, <gasps> This is so neat. Like you could see, like all of the TV shows, because um, it was a Warner Brothers studio mm -hmm. that Warner Brothers had done. They had a whole exhibit of Harry Potter costumes, and oh yeah, it was so cool. This is in LA. Yeah, this is in LA, and so because Fuller House was right next door, they kind of just pillaged the Gilmore Girls stuff when it was done. Yeah. That is so awesome. Yeah. So how does that work? Like the actor in me knows that you get residuals or whatever for appearances. So if Gilmore Girls bought the pizza sweater, they originally purchased like an item. Like if they went to a store and bought a sweater off of the rack, it was like that. But yeah. we designed it special 
So we had this opportunity, and we took advantage Does of it. Does Fuller House then also buy it, or it's just now? No, it was because it the, was property of yeah. WB. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was kind of that reappropriated. That is so cool. Did you expect your career to go to this place? Uh, no, and I didn't expect where I'm going now. Um, so we need to talk about now and the past too, though. So uh -huh. do you want to start from the beginning and get us up to this point and then talk about what's next? Sure. Okay. Um, Tell us your life story. Okay, um, I, ever since I was a little girl, I knew I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. That was just like, there was no question. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to make art. I knew that that's what made me happy. Mm -hmm. I went to fine art school um, at the Center for Creative Studies in Detroit. Um, I got my uh, bachelor's degree in sculpture um, and I studied textiles as well. Um, my yeah. whole senior thesis show was actually knit. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That it's funny because the, the, that's not the first time I've heard the pair up of sculpture and knitting. Mm -hmm. And I can't recall who it was, but that's so fascinating to mm -hmm. me. Yeah, uh, on the wall over here. Is you that can your see, thesis? Yeah, some of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I have the I have this. Uh, a deep fascination with conjoined twins yes. and um, people sharing uh, intimate space. Yes. Um, I, I had actually knit a hat where you, it's like one of those helmet hats where you like pull them on and it's like a, almost like a, a dicky kind of, uh -huh. um, but the tube was shared with another person. So you're sharing somebody's breathing space. Ooh. It's very claustrophobic. Ooh, so claustrophobic. But it was really, it was really fun. Piece. That's, that sounds artsy, for yeah. lack of a better. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah. So, um, That made me have a feeling, which means it was true art. Yay. Okay, keep going. Um, after I left, uh, after I got out of school, after I graduated, I was um, an assistant manager of a yarn shop in Detroit, City Knits. Um, they're actually no longer in Detroit, they're in Mount Clemens, I think, so they're in the northern suburbs. Um, I left there to come to Chicago because I got a job uh, working at Loopy Yarns. Mm -hmm. um, I was her manager for two years. Um, and when I left there, I left to pursue my knitwear design career full time, and it didn't pan out the way I wanted to. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't as lucrative as I wanted it to yeah. be. So I'm like, well, I gotta do something. And um, you know, there was about a, a year of like upheaval, and I worked at Home Depot for a moment. <laughs> Home Depot that, plays a role in many people's stories. You know, we that was fun. <laughs> Home Depot. But did you at least imagine some art out of some of those oh, yeah, sure. piles of stuff? Oh yeah, sure. Wait, wait. I am a big huge fan of, of a hardware store. I yeah. do love a good hardware yeah. store. Wait, wait. We're missing a beat. Where did you learn to knit? In school? No, I learned when I was eight years old. My grandmother taught me. Okay. Um, she was knitting these red mittens and I absolutely loved them. I'm like, I want to learn how to make mittens. And uh, the first I love period, your own voice. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so when I was uh, um, so when I was learning how to knit, my grandmother she showed me on probably just like a basic scarf. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what my first project yeah. was. Um, a holy something. Yeah, with oh, a crook. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, and ever since then, minus like a very short period of time in grade school where um, knitting wasn't cool, I've been knitting ever since. Mm. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And so it was really easy to, to bring that into your art when you were studying. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and to become a designer because you, you, from knitting so many patterns, you understand how it works. And since you're artistically minded, you can design. Yeah. So, okay, Home Depot. We're at Home Depot now. Okay. Um, so after, um, after a, a, a long bout of, of uh, self-discovery, I figured out that I wanted to own my own yarn shop. And so I went for it, and my partner was adamantly against it. Okay. And I said, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> and uh, it lasted five years. Actually, I, um, it was about a six-year journey, um, five of which we were open to the, to the public. And um, it was the most amazing uh, experience. I met so many wonderful people, and I had seen so many different lovely projects come through those doors mm -hmm. and um, in the end it was a financial decision to close yeah um, but I wouldn't have traded it for the world mm -hmm. I loved Sifu Sifu was full of nerdy weirdos and I just uh, 
I, I look back at it very fondly. Why did you call it Sifu? Sifu is a Chinese uh, Kung Fu term. It means master or teacher. Mm -hmm. um, when I left Detroit to come to Chicago, um, I was teaching my friend Asako how to knit. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, well now what am I going to do? I, what am I going to do without my knitting Sifu? And so she gave me this title and I was just so honored that um, I, I decided that's what I wanted to name yeah. the store. Oh, and the, the tagline for the store is, you can be a master of your craft. Nice. Could you like describe a few takeaways? I mean, besides um, what you just so beautifully articulated. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I definitely learned that running a business is um, not what I want to do. Not at least not a well, retail you're business. You're an artist. Yeah, I'm an mm -hmm. artist. I'm a maker. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like during that time, I really had to put that side of me. Um, on hold, mm -hmm. and so now that I'm away from that, I'm really exploring all different sides of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still staying within the fiber realm. Mm -hmm. um, I actually um, just acquired a loom. I see it. Yeah, yeah. It's a shocked um, floor. It's a it's a table loom, but it has a, a stand. Um, it's a four harness. Uh, I love it. I'm uh, I'm currently making an overshot um, medallion. Uh, repeatable. Um, I'm uh, going to be putting it into a hat. Cool. So I'm moving um, away from garments as far as like knit garments into more um, hats, millinery, and weaving. Uh, I'm still knitting a little, not as much as I used to. Mm -hmm. I have carpal tunnel pretty bad. Yeah. Um, and knitting just aggravates it mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I actually haven't picked up the needles in probably a couple months. Um, but but weaving you can do. Oh, yeah, I can do hand. weaving. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Lucia, from um, my business partner, she does a lot of knitting. She's she is just like a mad woman when it comes to knitting. Mm -hmm. She's constantly making something. Yeah, yeah. I just want to talk about for a second the. Um, I just want to go back to the word creative or mm -hmm. creator, so that is actually creating something. Because something I hear a lot from people is the business thing just doesn't work for them because they want to be actually physically doing mm -hmm. and making. And I was just thinking about how I think sometimes, I don't want this to come across the right way, sometimes the more education you have, mm -hmm. like higher education, college mm -hmm. or, or beyond, I think sometimes it makes us think, I only have a, what do I have, a bachelor degree, but I think sometimes being in that environment makes us think we need a job that's like a corporate job or a, like a, that is, do you, do you know what I'm getting at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm currently um, unemployed, um, I mean I'm self-employed at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but I don't have a regular income or a paycheck or you know a 401k or well, it's a freelance artist yes yeah, exactly mm -hmm. and so um, you know part of my part of my regular routine is you know looking for a paying job something that has like uh, you know a paycheck and some security behind it that will then be able to fuel all of my other creative endeavors yeah um, and you know in that search I have to look through all of the corporate positions that are out there, you know, mm -hmm. creative director for digital media resources. Yeah, and creative and, is in the title, Yeah, but, but it's, it's not, not the kind of hands-on you want. Right. That's what I'm it's, getting at. Yeah, and with creative directors and stuff, and, um, and uh, it, like uh, a managerial position, it's just like you don't have the hands-on of actually making something, mm -hmm. and most of those times, most of the times that those titles come up, it's like in the digital world, and I'm not necessarily a digital person. Yeah, you're I'm very analog. I'm very yeah. like hands-on. I yeah. want to make something. And so um, I'm trying to figure out where I fit in mm -hmm. and how I can, you know, mm -hmm. make it work. Exploring this topic helps me understand, I mean, a lot, a huge amount of the workforce in America, and I'm sure other countries, mm -hmm. it, people are doing jobs where they're touching things, not necessarily art, Mm -hmm. They're touching things and they're making something every day. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's in a factory or, right, you know, whatever context it is. And there's so many of us doing that. And there's something to it. Yeah, there's something you know, to that. I'm, um, it's I'm very in the process. Fulfilling. It, it is very, you know what I'm saying? It is, it's, it's what makes me 
the happiest mm -hmm. is when I'm making something. Yeah. Um, you know, through injury or whatever, yeah. it's, it doesn't matter as long as I have my hands on something and I'm yeah. making something. Because digital, you can't. Mm -mm, I can't touch it. It's, I can't where touch is it? it. Where is it? Yeah, right. Sorry to cut you off. Just, no, no, no. That's it's something I've been thinking about. Um, uh, one of the business ideas, um, as an entrepreneur, uh, I want to bring um, the fashion industry back to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And I've been thinking about what would it mean if I had 20 knitting machines lined up and, you know, had people come in and be able to utilize that kind of thing or, you know, like have it so that it would be almost like a maker space where mm. you can like come in, make something, um, but like change the way we think about how an item is made. Yeah. Because if you if you look online, there is a really huge trend of um, beautiful pieces that look nice on the internet, um, and then you see it like a price tag of twelve dollars. Yeah. Like, it's on Facebook. You the Facebook ads on the side. Oh yeah, right? on the side, just like twelve dollar sweater. And yeah. I'm like, how what? how does a sweater cost twelve dollars? Yeah. Um, it's the slave labor and the overworking of um, uh, people of less fortunate backgrounds. Yep. Um, they're the ones that are have their hands on something. They're making yeah. the things. Yeah, it has to be made by someone. Yeah, and but they're not getting the benefits. Right. They're they're being used, and then we're the ones that are, um, you know, we're. We're seeing all of these like low priced items that it's it's I can't com we can't compete with that. Mm -hmm. And so I want to think yeah. about how to bring that kind of fashion industry and the handmade and the craft industry back to America mm -hmm. and seeing how we can change things. Yeah. It's fast fashion, it's disposable fashion. Yep. It's you know, because it only costs twelve dollars, who cares? Right. You know, if something actually were more expensive or you understood how it was made. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a thing I've been talking to people about. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have an answer, but it's yeah. definitely on your radar. Well, uh, if there's somebody out there that wants to help me with this endeavor, I am available. You can call me at <laughs> or email me at. You can find. I'll put a link down below. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now talk about what's the now. We're up to now. <clears throat> the now. I am currently focusing on making hats. Millinery. Yeah. Lots so why? Of why millinery. hats? Um, a friend of mine, Emily Mo, she lives up in Duluth. She's a master milliner, and I just absolutely adored everything that she's ever made. She has, um, she used to live here in Chicago. Um, she's a knitter as well, um, very talented knitter. Um, but she has this just plethora of materials and hat blocks. And so I went up to her house uh, a couple months ago. And uh, I'm like, just teach me, teach me what, teach me what you do. And so we started with a felt hat, um, and then a large brim felt hat. And um, I have, I just love the process of it. I love like you felt the wool. Yeah, yeah, and it's like an angora wool, so it's mm. like really soft, um, and it's beautiful material. And um, there's so much you can do with hats. Like there's so many different like wild crazy fabrics and fibers and accessories and doodads and I love like ribbon and buttons and mm -hmm. soutache and, and frills and so mm -hmm. combining all of that and being able to actually use my stash of, you know. Yeah, because you have a lot of material. I do. I have a lot of materials. When the store closed, not just yarn, but yarn and ribbons and buttons. And I have probably two 10 gallon tubs still full of circular needles. Um, I have, If you need needles. If you need needles. <laughs> I have needles. Yeah. I'm actually thinking of putting up some eBay auctions yeah. of like a pack of 20 needles and just like hanging yeah. them out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be a good project. Yeah. It takes time, all those, EV, all those eBay listings. Right. So do you want to show some of your hats? Is yeah, that, totally. Can you pause and do some show and tell? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Here we are in the workspace. Yep. So this was my dining room. It is <laughs> now my workspace. Um, I am currently working on um, this. this lace sun hat. So I, um, 
I work a lot with uh, vintage lace, um, mm -hmm. and this was just a doily. Uh, and I had soaked it in an Elmer's Blue solution Ooh. so that it's nice and stiff. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was unpinning it. So you put you put it on mm -hmm. the form, and then yeah, you Elmer's Blue. You can kind of see just how stiff oh, it yeah. is. Um, I'm actually going to be trimming this all off, and then I'm going to put a nice big wide satin ribbon around the edge of it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wire it all up so that it stays put. But yeah, so this is That's one awesome. of the pieces I'm working on. Uh, here's another piece. This is a, a vintage tablecloth. Whoa. Yeah, I was just in the process of uh, shoring up the seam. Because mm -hmm. I had to like block it with all this scraggly bit. Yeah. Um, and so what will you do with these hats? Oh my gosh, you have to look at this one first. This, my, this one's my favorite. What? This is my Twin Peaks inspired. Stop uh, it. Yeah, this is the Squinomi Falls oh opening my goodness. to Twin Peaks. And uh, as you can see here, I have my um, Twin Peaks outfit, curtains and floor included. Oh my included. goodness. Yeah. Did you like the new Twin Peaks, the revamp? I did. It was a little weird, but I was obsessed with it. In high Twin school, Peaks totally so, weird though. Yeah. So yeah. Oh so this gosh. is my long lady hat. I love this. Look at that embroidery on there. Mm -hmm. And what material is this? This is this paint. It's hot glue. It is. Yeah, it's hot glue and like some stones. Oh my goodness. Moss. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That is so fun. You have to go to the Easter parade in New York. <gasps> Oh, I saw your video of the Easter Parade. How fun. Your little chick hat was so cute. But you would have won. <laughs> is this a hat? Yeah. yeah, so this is um this is a new direction for me. I don't know what I'm doing with this oh, wow. quite yet. Um I put these little flowers in there thinking that it would pull it together, but I'm not You might pull them out. Yet. <gasps> yeah, so That is so fun. I love the structure though. I mean you're definitely yeah. going somewhere cool. Yeah. So that is so cool. Wow, I didn't expect, you know, like, oh wait, what's that? Is this a hat? This is not a hat, this is a sleeve. Um, Whoa. This is going to be for my friend Paul. He does drag in New York. Mm -hmm. um, and this is gonna be for one of his outfits. <gasps> so. Yes. Yeah, I have this, uh, it's gonna be kind of, it's gonna come across this way and then it's gonna have a very square base to it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, That's going to be epic. That is so fun. You have a freelance artist life doing all this, all this, I mean you're obviously multi-talented and you have all these interests. Um, do you think you're going to be doing more, you mentioned at the very beginning, more like Hollywood design stuff? I would love it if it moved that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not putting any I'm not putting too high of expectations on where I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. I just want to really focus on what I'm making and then selling what I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if I can do that, then I feel like I've accomplished what I want to accomplish. What's the best place to sell? Um, I'm gonna be starting an Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the the name of the shop is gonna be Hail Satin Millinery. Okay. So uh, it's a little punny. Hail Satin. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm I'm hoping that you know that might be a good place for me to start. But um, there are a couple hat shots in the city. I know oh, that there's a couple hat shots in in uh, New York. So mm -hmm. um, when I get a good uh, collection together, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring my portfolio to a couple high end shops and see if I can't sell them there. So, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So you have your what is the um, what's the phrase you a lot of something in the fire. Oh, I fire love mine. a lot of uh, fingers cool. in different pies. Sure, <laughs> we'll put it that way. And it's coming together and it's gonna ebb and flow and be what it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm letting my, my path be open at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but knitting has always been and always will be the basis of my passion for creating. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's that darn carpal tunnel. I know, it's so stupid. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad I found you because I love finding people who are like passionate and specific and like true artists and so I'm glad you would be here today. I have nine questions that I ask everybody. Okay. Um, they're really fast. You ready? Okay. Yep. Knit or crochet? Knit. Weave or spin? Weave. Uh, cashmere or alpaca? Cashmere. Sweater or socks? 
Sweater. Color or neutral? Color. Bulky or fingery? Fingery. Favorite place to knit in public if your arms aren't hurt, if your hands aren't hurting? Wrists. Wrists. The beach. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do you go to like Michigan Beach? Yeah, it's beautiful and the water is so lovely right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah it was very yesterday. blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite project of all time? Um, favorite projects of all time. Ooh, uh, anything Fair Isle. Mm. What's on your needles right now? Oh, I had a list at one point. It was like Probably. 85. 85. When I was working at the shop, because I would start something with a class, and then I would set it yes. down, and then I'd start something else with a different class, and mm -hmm. just like I'd never get back to it because I was constantly doing something else. And so I, I have, um, I have a few things that are, you know, that need to be finished. Oh, I have an embroidery project. Ooh, this is a naughty embroidery project. Ooh, you want to show that? <laughs> you want to see it? So this is my Tom of Finland inspired. Oh wow! Knitter. Oh wow! Dude. That yeah. is quite the embroidery. His little man hood sticks out the bottom of the scarf. That's good. <laughs> his, um, wow, his hat. You can see this is like really beautiful. It's a little crinkled. Love it. I love yeah. embroidering. Isn't it fun? It really is. It's like drawing with a needle and thread. Oh, it. this is a sweater that I'm working on. It is Gorgeous. almost finished. This is the last panel. This was designed by my friend Sam Tesla. That is so pretty. Yep. So it's a nice like one. hearty wool. Too. Yeah, it's a eco wool mm -hmm. cascade. Mm -hmm. It's a good outer layer. So this should be done pretty soon, I'm hoping. And then this, this is my poncho penguin Ooh. style sweater. This is a Pickles design. It oh, was yes, their, mm -hmm. this is um, their, I don't remember what they called it. But this uh, yarn, something, something. is this the one with the, all the triangles? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is on my queue. Yes, that one. Yep. Yes. That's on my queue. Yep. That is yeah, so, so cute. So that's what this is going to be. And it's in um, Blue Sky Alpaca Melange. It is so it's luxurious. Delicious. It's delicious. I love an alpaca blend. Mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah. my favorite thing ever. Yeah. Well, that's so those so are a couple cool. of the things that I'm working on at the moment. Yeah. I hope your wrists feel better. Me too. I had that when I was pregnant and I had to wear a... Every once in a while I still pull it out. Like mm -hmm. a little, little wrist, wrist brace. brace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It helps. Yeah. It does. Um, Lisa, it was so fun to meet yeah, you. Yeah, it was fun to meet you too. Thanks Thank you so much for finding me. Thanks for being on Krista Gossets. I'll yeah. put links down below anything that we've been talking about, and then you can reach out because you're pretty easy to find. Yeah, with the links. Yep, totally. Awesome. Bye, Bye guys.